Kirby Allison, founder of The Hanger Project. The purpose of this video is to show you the presidential shoe shine. This is our most thorough and extensive shoe shine here at The Hanger Project, and we recommend it for once or twice a year total rejuvenation of a pair of shoes. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using my first pair of uh, GJ Cleverly bespoke shoes. I received these hole cuts uh, about three years ago, and you can see that after you know continuous use over the time, um, you know, you're really starting to see the buildup of uh, the polishes. And not just the buildup, but you can see where it's cracking around the toe box. I've got some water stains on the side. And so these shoes have just kind of reached the moment in their lifetime where they really need total rejuvenation. And for that, we designed the presidential uh, shoe shine. First, what I'm gonna do is start with the Saphir Reno Mat, which is the strongest of the leather cleaners that we sell here at the Hanger Project. Now, this uh, cleaner was developed uh, for Saphir specifically uh, with the purpose of removing any type of wax or resin buildup that accumulates on top of the leather. Now, what that's gonna allow us to do is basically strip off all these waxes that have accumulated over uh, you know, multiple polishes, uh, and then pull off any type of resins or silicones that uh, you know, might have been placed on the leather uh, from cheaper, kind of more inferior um, you know, shoe polishes like what you'd see at a shoe shine stand at an airport. Now, that's not a problem with these shoes, but you know, that's also a reason why you'd wanna use the presidential shoe shine. After that, what we're going to do is we're basically going to uh, restore the leather back to the original condition after the leather was tanned. Now, it's not pulling you know, the original finish of the shoe off, but it's really pulling uh, anything on top of that leather off. Now, what that's going to allow us to do is then come on top with the Dubbin uh, Grazé, which is an animal and plant-based conditioner. This is really strong, potent stuff, and so what this is going to allow us to do is really provide deep conditioning and nourishment uh, of certain areas of the leather. Uh, after that, then I'm going to come on top with the Saphir Renovateur, uh, which is a mink oil based cleaner and conditioner. Uh, this is going to further condition the leather, which is really important to um, you know, preserving the quality of the leather over a long term horizon. Uh, and it also contains waxes, which is going to uh, allow us to start building up that wax finish. After the renovator, I'm going to use the Saphir Medal d'Or Palmadier Cream Polish, the pigmented polish, which will allow us to restore and rejuvenate the finish of the shoes. Uh, and then I'm going to finish with um, some Saphir Pate Deluxe Wax Polish, uh, which is going to build that higher gloss shine, which I like on my shoes, and then also that protective wax finish. Now, since this is a total care, we don't want to forget the rest of the shoes, so I'm going to use the Saphir Medal d'Or Sole Guard to condition and waterproof the soles of the shoe. And then lastly, I'm gonna finish off with the Saphir Edge Dressing um, to finish the, um, or basically restore and renew uh, the color on the edges of these shoes. The first step of the presidential shoe shine is to use the Saphir Reno Mat to basically strip off anything that's been placed on top of the leather. Now this is a great component of the presidential shoe shine because this is something you're only going to do once or twice a year. It is not something that we would recommend really using any more often than that because it is a pretty strong uh, cleaner. So uh, first start off by basically just applying the Reno Mat on a cotton chamois. Um, I've got one of our Saphir chamois here. I prefer using uh, one of our plusher chamois just because it takes more of the Reno mat. And as with anything, uh, we always recommend that you first test this on a hidden area of the shoe just to make sure that it doesn't react in any unintended ways. Now the Saphir Reno mat you know, was designed to be used on the highest quality leathers. So you really shouldn't experience any problem with uh, high quality expensive shoes. You know, really where we see problems are on uh, lower quality shoes that might have used different type of dyeing techniques. Sometimes the Reno mat can, um, can remove that. So if you feel that it's actually affecting the original finish of the shoes, uh, stop using the Reno mat. But after you've tested it, and I have, it's fine. You know, basically what you're gonna use is, um, you know, the cotton chamois to basically just pull the uh, the wax finish uh, off of the shoe. So you're going to use uh, moderate to firm pressure and small circular motions and you're going to see um, you know that the Reno mat is actually pulling the wax um, even some of the the pigment from prior polishes uh, off of the leather. It does require a little bit of elbow grease 
feel free to apply more Reno mat and um, get to work. So the, uh, the Reno mat really does require a little bit of uh, elbow grease here, especially in the areas of the shoe where you have a lot of buildup of hard waxes, uh, particularly the toe box. So I've been going at the toe box, you know, probably for, <clears throat> you know, three or five minutes, you know, just switching to a clean part of the chamois, applying some more Reno mat, uh, and then, you know, really trying to massage and, and, and rub that hard wax off. You can tell that you've done, you know, you can tell that you're done whenever you look at the, um, you the shoe and you just don't see any of the buildup of hard waxes anymore. So I'm pretty satisfied with, uh, you know, having pulled off all the waxes off of the shoe. I've got it to where I want it to be. So the last step that I like to do is to, you know, just spray a little bit of water on the shoe um, and then rub it with a clean chamois. Now the purpose of this is, as you can see, is removing any of the residual buildup of the Reno mat that's left in the leather. You know, just to be careful, I like to pull as much of that off as possible. You know, you can even run your shoes under some water. Um, but the point is, is, you know, after I've, you know, after the leather has absorbed some of this Reno mat is to try to get as much, as much of that off the leather as possible. So you can see now, uh, whenever I spray the shoe with water and I use this uh, clean chamois, uh, I'm not getting any um, <clears throat> you know, white suds. And so basically that's telling me that I pulled all of that off the shoe. So now that we've uh, used the Reno mat to pull any of the accumulated resins or polish uh, off of these uh, Cleverly's, uh, I'm just gonna allow them to dry, um, you know, probably you know, 30 minutes, an hour. Uh, and then after that, I'm gonna come back on top of the dubbin. Okay, so after we have allowed the, uh, the shoes to dry a little bit after using the water to clean the Reno mat off, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide deep conditioning and nourishment using the Saphir dubbin. Now the Saphir dubbin is a mink oil based, um, you know, dubbin grasse. It contains a high concentration of fish and animal fats. And what this is going to do is it's going to really penetrate the leather to provide that nourishment to keep the leather soft and supple, mm -hmm. uh, which prevents cracking and, and then just keeps it hydrated. Now you can also use the Saphir Mandalde or mink oil, uh, which is a newer product, which is a highly refined 100% mink oil. They both work in the same way, uh, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to use the Saphir Devon. So a few notes on the Devon. First, apply the dubbin using a cotton chamois. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna twist it around my fingers on a clean portion uh, of the chamois. And then second, because the dubbin is uh, so potent, you really just wanna apply it across the vamp and on uh, the side of the shoes. So you don't wanna apply it to any of the hard countered areas like the toe or the rear where you'd want to build a really high gloss polish because the dubbin can um, make it a little bit difficult to build that polish. So just apply with the cotton chamois, you know, less is more, um, and just apply it using, um, you know, small circular motions using moderate to firm pressure. I'm going to take it across the vamp and around the sides. Um, <clears throat> Now the purpose of the Devon, again, remember, is the conditioning. So what we recommend is that you actually, uh, after you've applied the Devon, you allow um, you know, at least a day for the leather to absorb those really deep, thick uh, nutrients. You can see almost immediately the leather you know, really being fed by this Devon. I'm going to take this all the way around the back of the shoe because, um, you know, this leather, you know, really needs some of this deep hydration. Again, I'm massaging it into the leather across the vamp. And there you go. So I'm not going to buff this off like I would a traditional uh, cream or wax polish. I'm going to allow the leather to absorb this, um, you know, the longer the better, up to a day or two. 
uh, and then depending on how thickly you apply this, less is more, um, but if you apply it especially thick, uh, it will darken the leather. That just means that the leather is absorbing those nutrients. Uh, once the leather is returned back to its original color, that means that uh, all those nutrients have been fully absorbed. At that point, what we're going to do is we're going to buff this off and then continue by applying the Saphir Renovator. So we've allowed the dubbin to dry overnight, basically giving the dubbin uh, or the leather as much time as possible to absorb the nutrients of the dubbin. And so before we move on to applying the Renovator, we're just gonna buff off any uh, excess dubbin using a horsehair shoe shine brush. So um, here's the shoe that we applied the dubbin on and using, um, you know, using light to moderate pressure, we're just gonna buff any excess dubbin off of the shoe. Okay, so the next step in the presidential shoe shine is to begin building the foundation of our finish uh, using the Saphir Renovator. The Saphir Renovator Medal d'Or is arguably Saphir's most popular product. It's like liquid gold. It's a, a water-based uh, mink oil uh, cleaner and conditioner, and it uh, really is more of a conditioner than it is a cleaner. It's a fantastic uh, conditioner that's going to hydrate this leather um, and continue to uh, you know, nourish the skin. Uh, it also contains a, a small amount of waxes, so you do begin to build that wax finish. So we're going to apply the Renovator just using a cotton chamois. And, um, you know, depending on how much time you have, you know, you could apply the Renovator, you know, you know, I think if you're, depending on the condition of your shoes, you could apply it, you know, one, you know, one to two times. So I'm going to put a little bit of Renovator on the chamois and I'm going to massage it into the leather using moderate to firm pressure. Now, just like with any creams, the longer you leave the creams on the leather, the more nutrients the leather is going to be able to absorb. This is especially true with the Renovator since it doesn't contain any solvents or turpentines. It's water-based. So it just requires a little bit more time to absorb, you know, as many nutrients into the leather as possible. Okay, so after you apply the Renovator, allow it, you know, a good two to three, you know, five minutes to dry. Essentially, the longer you can leave the Renovator on the leather, the more uh, nutrients the leather is going to absorb. But because it's not as uh, potent it's more of an all-purpose conditioner than say like the dubbin you know you don't need to leave it overnight you know you can if you want to it's not going to hurt the leather for sure but after you have allowed it to dry um, you're going to buff the Renovator um, off of the shoe using a horsehair brush this just removes any excess Renovator and then also it's going to bring you know to, to kind of uh, glissage over the waxes you know, to buff them to a nice shine. After we've begun to build up the foundation of, uh, of this finish using the Saphir Renovator, the next step is to introduce a pigmented cream polish. And there's absolutely no better pigmented cream polish on the market, especially for high-end luxury shoes like these bespoke Cleverly's, than the Saphir Palmadier Medal d'Or Cream. What's important about the uh, Palmadier Medal Dior cream is that it's an all-natural pine-based turpentine um, cream that uses absolutely no silicones or resins. So it's going to do an incredible job nourishing the leather, uh, recoloring because it has a very high quality pigment, but it doesn't have any you know, uh, unnatural ingredients that are going to clog up the pores and prevent the leather from breathing. So you can really smell the difference in the Medal Dior Palmadier cream polish. For starters, it uses an all-natural pine-based turpentine to penetrate deep into the leather uh, to deliver the nutrients. It's very important because other water-based creams don't actually penetrate the leather. You're just rubbing something on the surface. Second, it uses uh, shea butter to, uh, to nourish the leather and then can, contains a, a combination of over 10 different types of um, animal, vegetable, and mineral waxes to, again, further nourish and protect the leather. So I'm going to apply this using a cotton chamois. Um, this is one of our Saphir chamois that we sell. And uh, less is more whenever it comes to a cream polish. So I like to take some out of the jar and then rub it on the top of the lid or the bottom of the lid to, to help me further control the amount of polish that I'm uh, rubbing onto the leather. So to begin, um, you know, simply put some of the cream polish on your chamois and then you're just going to rub and massage it into the leather. Add more as is needed. 
Again, you want to be massaging this into the leather. You're applying a thin layer, but you don't want so much that it's clumping or gunking. Uh, it's not a problem if it occurs uh, because you can buff it off, but it just makes buffing easier if you apply a thinner coat. You know, there's 13 different colors to the Saphir Pomodier Cream Polish. So we really have an unprecedented you know, number of colors to allow you to match almost any finish. But one of the questions we always get is like, you know, how important is the perfect match? And uh, you know, there's really no such thing as a perfect match. One of the things to keep in mind is that, you know, this isn't uh, paint, it's not a, a, an alcohol-based leather dye. I mean, you know, I could apply black polish to these burgundy shoes and it would darken the finish, but it wouldn't make them black. So you're not going to ruin anything, you know, by using uh, a color that's, you know, slightly different uh, than the natural color of the leather. And the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, part of the beauty of shining your own shoes is that, you know, the more you shine them, you know, the color and the patina of the shoe itself evolves. So you know, don't focus too much on color. Um, and if you're really worried about darkening the color of your shoes, uh, then I recommend using a pigment that is uh, slightly lighter uh, than, the, than the color you'd like to achieve. One of the other things that's really important about the Pomodier Cream Polish in this step is that, you know, we're introducing pigment and so the pigment is going to recolor any types of scuffs or scratches that may occur and to renew the finish, right? So on the back of my shoes, you know, I've got a few small scuffs here. So I'm just going to, you know, really kind of rub the cream polish into that area to conceal that as much as possible. So now that I'm done massaging the Pomodoro Cream Polish onto the leather, I'm going to give it a few minutes to fully absorb these nutrients. Um, you know, the longer the better, uh, you know, two to three, you know, maybe five minutes is sufficient. But, uh, you know, if you want to leave this on overnight, you know, you're not going to damage your shoes in any way. I've allowed the Saphir Pomodoro Cream Polish to absorb into the leather for about five minutes. Um, so next, uh, simply take a horsehair shoe shine brush and we're going to buff off any of the extra uh, cream polish and uh, work that wax to a nice soft shine. Okay, so now that we've applied, um, you know, two coats of the Saphir cream polish, uh, we've really renewed the finish. We're beginning to build that protective wax uh, finish uh, with the waxes. The next step is to take the uh, Saphir Medal d'Or uh, Pate Deluxe Wax Polish. Um, now the Saphir Medal d'Or Pate Deluxe Wax Polish has a higher concentration of hard waxes, uh, the Carnuba Wax, the Montagne Wax, and what that's going to do is it's going to build up that hard protective wax finish. Now the first one or two coats we're going to do on the entire shoe, but you don't want to do more than one or two coats of a hard wax polish. Um, you know, across the entire shoe because those hard waxes, if you get too much buildup across the vamp, uh, will crack and cause a white residue to form. But one or two coats will be enough to, to protect the shoe. And then if you want to build up a higher glass shine on the toe box, or the toe box or the, the hind quarters, um, then you can, you know, use our high gloss, um, kind of our high gloss methodology to build up that shine. But this is just for the purpose of kind of restoring this finish. We're going to do two coats with the wax polish. So I'm using a burgundy wax polish and I'm going to just simply apply it using uh, my cotton chamois. I'm going to twist it around my fingers. Now as with all shoe polish, less is more. I prefer using a cotton chamois to apply my polishes because I feel like it allows me to control it more. Uh, but some people prefer using a dauber. You know, unless you're doing the mirror shine, you know, it's really not essential that you use a chamois. Um, so I'm just going to apply some of the wax uh, onto my cotton chamois and then begin massaging this into the leather using small circular motions. So I'm using small circular motions to apply the wax polish. Uh, again, you know, you just want an even coat around the entire shoe. Uh, after you've achieved an even coat, uh, allow it to dry, and then you're going to buff it off with the horsehair brush. So we've allowed the uh, Pate Deluxe Wax Polish to dry 
um, you know, for a few minutes, you really just want the waxes to dry and then it's okay to buff them off. So I'm going to take a horsehair shoe shine brush using moderate to firm pressure and kind of brisk brushing. I'm going to buff those waxes off. So you can really see after just one uh, application of the wax polish, we're really starting to see the shine elevate. I'm going to do uh, one more application here. Again, you know, at this point in the presidential shoe shine um, routine, the purpose of the wax polish is to really build that protective wax finish that helps, um, you know, really just protect the leather against any type of water or stains. So I'm going to apply it to the entire shoe. Again, same process, just a light application across the entire shoe. Okay, so you can really see that these cleverlies are looking fantastic. Um, you know, just a summary of what we've done up to this point. You know, we stripped off all of the accumulated, um, you know, resins, waxes, polish, um, you know, that accumulates over months or years of shoe care. We stripped that off using the Saphir Reno mat, basically exposing the original leather. Then we did a deep conditioning with the Saphir Dubbin Medal d'Or to really penetrate deep into the leather to hydrate it. Then we built uh, the finish using the Saphir Renovateur um, and then continued with the pigmented cream polish, the Saphir Palmadier cream polish, and then finally finished with the two cut coats of the Pat de wax polish. And you can see these shoes compared to where they started are totally renovated, completely renewed. Uh, they look fantastic. So now that we've spent time making these uppers look fantastic, we don't want to forget about the rest of the shoe. Most importantly, uh, you never want to ignore the edge. Uh, a beautiful pair of shine shoes that have a terrible looking edge, um, you know, it's just embarrassing. So what we're going to use here is the Renovating Repair Cream, which we use as an edge dressing. Uh, I really like the Renovating Repair Cream uh, over a standard uh, liquid dye based edge dressing because I find that you do a better job or that you're able to do a better job controlling the application and because this is essentially just resin and pigment you know it does a good job filling any type of uh, scuffs or indentations to smooth the surface off. So uh, you can simply apply this using your finger. Um, so I'm just applying a little bit of this dark brown edge dressing on my finger and then you're just going to smooth it across the edge. So again, you know, get a little bit on there and then just take your finger and smooth it across. You want to be careful not to get any of this on the upper itself because it is a permanent uh, resin based dye. But the beauty of this is once it dries, um, you don't have to worry about it rubbing off on anything. So I'm going to take this around the entire edge. You know, you can see that it's a nice dark brown, which I like. Uh, but once you thin it out, it's not as dark as if you leave it on there really thick. So again, these folks' shoes have a very kind of tight welt. So I'm going very carefully around this because I don't have much margin of error. Okay, so I'm going to allow this a few minutes to dry. The edge has been recolored. Okay, so the last step uh, of the presidential shoe shine is to use the Saphir Medal d'Or sole guard uh, to condition and waterproof the soles of the shoe. Now, the most overlooked part of a high quality dress shoe is most often the sole. And so this is, um, the sole guard is a highly refined vegetable oil that is going to condition the sole and then it's been modified in the laboratory also to uh, provide waterproofing. And so what that does is it just helps prevent, you know, the sole becoming, you know, really waterlogged. It helps prevent salt damage and it's just going to prevent premature uh, wear of the actual leather dress sole. Now, the way that you apply this is with a cotton chamois. Um, again, you want to apply it sparingly. Um, you know, you don't want any type of excess on the actual sole itself. So I'm going to just apply it to my cotton chamois. You can see that here. And then just kind of massage it in. So it takes several applications just because, again, the, uh, the leather sole 
absorbs this, you know, pretty readily. After you apply this, you're going to want to allow uh, at least an hour, if not a little bit longer, for the uh, leather sole to fully absorb the uh, sole guard and for it to set. Um, it is a non-slippery formulation and another thing that's nice about the sole guard is it's been modified uh, so that it doesn't rub off once it's dried. So here I'm applying it to the sole. You know, really kind of saturating uh, the leather sole without you know it kind of running off. And I'm just going to do this to the sole, I'm not going to do it to the heel. So that's it for the uh, leather sole guard. Allow this at least an hour to dry. You can come on with a second application, but if you do a second application, you want to allow that at least six hours to dry uh, before you actually uh, try to wear your shoes. Okay, so now that we've allowed the uh, Saphir Soul Guard to dry uh, overnight, I just wanted to demonstrate the difference. So uh, this is the sole where I applied the Soul Guard, and you can see the water just beat up and roll right off, right? And so what that is, that's the waterproofing um, that you get with the Soul Guard. Uh, on this shoe, I didn't apply the Soul Guard just because I wanted to demonstrate the difference, and you can see how the water really kind of soaks in doesn't beat up like it does on this one. So you can see after having applied that water, you can hardly see any water penetration on the sole that we applied the sole guard, whereas the one that didn't have the sole guard, uh, the water saturated the sole. So the difference that that makes over the lifetime of the shoe is it just prevents the premature wear uh, of the leather sole by reducing the amount of water that's really penetrating into the sole. Uh, and then, you know, for people that live in, in winter states where you have salt on the ground, again, reducing uh, the penetration of the salt into the leather sole, which can, you know, um, affect wear. And that's it for the presidential shoe shine. Now you can see that the presidential shoe shine is a really thorough, rigorous shine uh, that really is only meant to be done once a year. Uh, maybe twice a year depending on how often you're wearing your shoes. As you can tell from these clever leaves, I mean they've really been given a completely new lease. They look fantastic. I can't wait to wear them. So thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this presidential shoe shine tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Uh, we do answer those. Or email us at shoeshine at hangerproject.com. And be sure to visit hangerproject.com to visit our full collection of luxury shoe care accessories.